On this build, we're going to be joining the ATLTF build off. Now, a lot of you over the years have decided to say that my builds are crap. My builds suck. You can do better on a Tuesday while you're totally drunk. Good. Come join me. I dare you. ATLTF.com, they're going to be doing a just for the giggles of it build off this year. And so we're joining in with this custom build that we're going to take racing. You think you can build something better? Good. Show me. Join the ATLTF.com. All you got to do is have a pile of parts and a board that lets you enter into the contest. At the end of this video, I'll even show you a little bit of a walkthrough on how to be able to join it. Because, you know, when you make stupid comments like a lot of you usually do when you're ragging on my builds, probably not able to figure out how to join the contest. But that's okay. I'll make sure to go and include a how-to for you. But that's enough talking about that kind of stuff. Let's get into what we're going to be doing with this build because I'm sure a lot of you have been chomping at the bit to find out. Now we got my ugly mug behind the camera instead of in it. We've got this Sears Custom. Now, one of the big things about this Custom is you sit really high. And if you've ever been drag racing, you've ever been racing of any kind, you want to get as low as possible. So, here's what I figure we do. I figure we take this and we split it right here and we dump that as low as possible. Put that shifter as far down close to the ground as we can and get this section of frame upper here so that it is level or, if anything, possibly an inch or two lower in the front. The reason being is I want to take this rear end, I want to widen it with these spacers, and all of this stuff that I'm showing in the video, I'll make sure to have links for in the description. These are two inch wide spacers that are made for a Ford Ranger or a Jeep. These will work as bolt-ons for the 633 transmission that is in this. Now, why do we need two inch spacers? The reason being is because I want to use this to make a T-bucket dragster style seat. I want to take those fenders off I want to drop that down onto the frame and I want to be able to sit in this so that when I take off in this thing, I've got full back support and everything, no ifs, ands, or buts, committed, cannot roll out of it, cannot get lost, whatever. That being said, we'll probably take these fenders and we'll probably bring them out and put them on the outside edge just to maintain the suburban style look. But We'll see when we get there. This motor in here is utterly, totally junk. And yes, to answer the question everybody asks, somebody ran the muffler out through the front. I've had a lot of people joke that I should maintain the look of this front and keep it that way. We'll see where we progress with the build. The real reality is we're going racing, which means straight pipes, open headers, all that kind of stuff. So the muffler eyeball thing is probably going away. But we'll figure out something to do with this front end to make it more appealing. Now, speaking of front end, this right here is going to come way out. It's going to probably come six inches out and it's going to come up so we can drop the whole front end down. We're going to probably run these to start with because we want to take it out and play on the ice. Unfortunately, these are insanely heavy. Um, I'll probably be picking up a different set of tires that are much, much lighter than these. But for now, these are what I have on hand to be able to get some grip on the ice. So that's what we'll probably try to start with. And then for drag racing, we'll convert it over to some skinnies on the front or something. This motor is utter total locked up garbage. It is done for. Um, we're going to be ripping that out. The steering is, uh, yeah, it's exceptional steering. Seat needs to go away. 
But that's all stuff that we'll get into later. The next video on this will be ripping this down to frame to see what we have to work with. And I need to see if I can still order the ball that's on the inside of those shifters. Because this thing is massively loosey-goosey. But it does seem to actually shift into all of the gears. So we're going to hope that that'll work. Now the star of the show for this is this 16, uh, not sorry, 18 horsepower Duramax, 440 cc. The reason why we're working with this motor and not a twin cylinder is because A, I wanted to attempt to fit under the hood without too much obliteration of the original style of the machine. B, in the drag racing that I do during the summer, the small mod is a 500cc limit. So I want to build this to be within the small mod rules for drag racing and go see what this thing will do in about 100 to 150 feet. The goal, we built Diesel Eater. I'll post a picture of that up. We built Diesel Eater that ran on a very worn out 10 horsepower Yanmar diesel. And we were able to pull 28 miles per hour on that at the drag races. So with this turning a solid 1,000 RPMs more, we should easily clear 30 without even thinking about it. So our goal really is to try and hit 40, but we'll see if we can get there. Now, with these Duromaxes, I'm going to start this up for you guys so that you can see when you rev it. These things stock horrifically like to fall flat on their face when you rev them. So without question, one of the first things we're going to have to do is carburetor mods, straight pipe the exhaust, all that kind of stuff. But none of that is going to happen until we have a tack on it and we get this tack installed and we're able to test what this does stock and what each one of the mods ends up doing. We have a jet kit for the carburetor to put in, so that once we straight pipe the exhaust, that that will help. And we'll go from there. So would you guys like to hear this? Yes? No? Yes? Okay, fine. Let's hear it run. All right, I talked about this in a video over on Redneck Computer Geek, but this is literally my favorite booster pack that I use. It has an air compressor built into it. It's got more than enough cranking amp for just about anything you're going to deal with around the house. It's got lights and everything. This thing is amazing. So, the other thing that's amazing about this is it has no stupid safeties on it. So, be smart when you're connecting it. We got a ground hooked up. We got positive on the solenoid. We've got choke on, fuel on, I believe. Nope, fuel on, wrap it, and hold on to the air box. This is the muffler, don't grab this one. Here we go. So as you can see, it needs some work. It needs a governor delete. It needs an air intake upgrade. It needs a whole bunch of things. We're going to build it within the class rules for drag racing so we can try it later this year. Maybe later on, we'll go nuts with it. Get inside, do all the internals, 
Maybe we'll upgrade to a giant Makuni carburetor. Maybe we'll do valves. Maybe we'll do heads. Maybe we'll join the outlaw class in drag racing with a single cylinder, which would be thoroughly different than anybody else in the group. But for now, I'm just going to give you directions on how to go and join the ATLTF build-off so that that way you can come show me your build and you can build something better than this because that's what a lot of you talkers usually say. So run your mower, not your mouth, as they say on one of the YouTube channels I watch. Have fun, guys. Oh, you're still watching. You actually want to join the ATLTF? All right, so seriously... Let's say that you have something like this giant Toro here, and you want to enter it into the ATLTF build-off just because you want to compete against me or because you think you can build better or whatever. So, one of the first things you're going to need is a simple piece of cardboard. ATLTF, the password to enter is Jackalope. You need a date, you need what your username on ATLTF is, aka you got to be smart enough to actually join the site in order to be able to compete, and you need that piece of cardboard pictured with the machine that you're going to be building, along with a statement as to what you intend to do with it. It's that simple. It's a just for the giggles of it build off this year. There's no real obligation, no real, you know, winning giant prize or whatever. I might throw in some bumper stickers later for a few of the participants and stuff like that. But for the most part, it is simply just so that you can prove that you're the best builder out there. So come on in, join us, join the ATLTF build off, and have some fun.